Imagine you buy a lottery ticket and actually win the lottery. You'd probably be jumping up and down with joy, celebrating your newfound fortune. You'd call up all your friends and family, think of all the ways you could spend the prize money, ring up your creditors and tell them you're finally paying them off. But what if the very next day, they tell you there's been a mistake and you actually aren't going to get the money that you've rightfully won? To say you'd be angry would be an understatement. This is how thousands of people in the Philippines felt with Pepsi's number fever campaign. This is Siddhant and welcome back to another episode of Let's Do Shots. This story is about perhaps the deadliest marketing campaign in history which serves as a cautionary tale for brands today. The cola wars are a global phenomenon. Pepsi and Coca-Cola go head to head in every market in the world. Coca-Cola came to the Philippines in 1912 while Pepsi only entered the market in 1989. Obviously, Coca-Cola had already established its domination in the country and held over 75% of the market share. Pepsi on the other hand wasn't doing so well. Determined to bring its rival down, Pepsi launched its infamous Number Fever campaign in 1992. Now, this was a campaign that was extremely successful in the US. The idea was simple. You buy a bottle of Pepsi, on the underside of the bottle cap there's a three-digit number. If you're lucky, the three-digit number is called out on the nightly TV show and you win some cash. Anything between 100 to a million pesos. Sweet, right? An algorithm was created to ensure the cash prizes would not exceed 2 million dollars, which was the budget for the whole promotion. The response was phenomenal. In the first two weeks itself, sales were up by 40%. Consumers were buying the soft drink and holding caps like it was treasure. There were people rummaging through garbage on the streets looking for the numbered caps and maids were caught stealing the same from homes they worked at. In fact, two Pepsi salespersons were murdered following a dispute over these bottle caps. It was pure mania. Pepsi's market share went up to 25% in just a few weeks. Half the population of the country had purchased the product to participate in the game. Everyone was trying their luck. The campaign was being hailed as the most successful promo in the world. Things were going exceedingly well until it wasn't. Towards the end of the campaign, Pepsi finally announced a number that would win the grand prize of a million pesos. The number was 349, 349. Now the plan was to just have two bottle caps that read 349 but as it turned out the company printed about 8 lakh of them we're not sure what happened there but pepsi blames it on a computer software glitch thousands of people thought their lives were going to change that night people were ecstatic a million pesos is a lot of money especially in a country that's stricken with homelessness and poverty if you're too lazy to do the math it's a little over 15 lakh rupees And back in 1992, the number was worth a lot more than it is today. Thousands of people began turning up at Pepsi plants around the country in hopes of claiming their prize. That's when Pepsi figured they'd made a huge blunder. If they paid each winner, it would cost them about 32 billion dollars, which was equivalent to half the GDP of the Philippines at the time. So they gave each claimant a small token prize of 500 pesos, which is a far cry from the 1 million pesos they were expecting. Naturally they were not thrilled. People felt cheated. For 3 months straight, they spent their hard-earned money buying the drink, collecting the bottle caps, only to be told it was all in vain. Protests were held outside the Pepsi factories which turned into riots. Bricks were thrown through Pepsi's office windows. Trucks were set on fire. Death threats were sent. A grenade was thrown into the factory that took the life of 3 employees. Pepsi's market share dipped once again. The marketing campaign had turned into a complete fiasco. 10,000 people with that winning cap number filed lawsuits against the company. Pepsi was embroiled in court battles for over a decade. The last case was shut in 2006, 14 years after the promotion started. Finally, the court ruled in favor of the cola giant. Although the court battles went on for years, Pepsi sales normalized after the protests died down. This goes to show just how resilient some brands can be. The company compensated about a half million people for a total of 10 million dollars, which was way over their initial 2 million dollar budget. But all's well that ends well for Pepsi, who got out of the whole mess scot-free. Mm-hmm.